my guys, we are approaching that critical time where we can start using like low rarity clears. And so honestly, this is music to my ears. I freaking love low rarity clears because I'm a freaking ape. And so today I stumbled upon a low rarity clear, a very, very low rarity clear. And I would even go as far as to call it a cheese. And so with that being said, Hi, welcome back to another Revive Witch video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about the Broken Lands, which is a, it's a new game mode, like where you have to fight four kind of boss mode things. This bad boy is unlocked when you get to about like 3.5, I believe, or chapter four. And so essentially the crux of it is that there are four stages. You don't have to actually do them sequentially. And in these stages, you are fighting some very, very tanky monsters. So if I click start cleaning, I can click enemy record. And so as you can see, this guy is Hellhound. Uh, unfortunately, there's, there's not much that I can show you here, but but believe me guys, this is actually quite hard content. And so the reason that we do this bad boy is because of the rewards. Look at these fat, fat jemmies. And so being able to clear area three alone is gonna get you one full pool worth of gems. And if you are able to clear area one and two, it will get you another pool. At this moment, I don't know if it's actually possible to clear area four because I've seen a lot of whales just get slammed. However, as the days go on, maybe we will see some clears for it. But today I wanna to talk about the cheese and like kind of the general strategy for the broken lands. Okay, and so to kick things off, you can see over here, there are some really, really low rarity units here. So let me just quickly cover this off from a strategic point of view before I get into each of the team comps. But the idea right now is that we can only cheese area one and two. And so you have to save your best units for area three. All right, and so with that being said, let's go offline and look at a image. Okay, my guys, let me introduce you to the guide with the cheese for stage one and two by Moe or Mo. But like in Discord, he seems to really like abusing Lilia. So you can look him up via that IGN. But anyway, big shout out to Mo for putting together this one because... <laughs> This is what I love to see. And so essentially for area one and two, you can use some really, really low rarity, low ascension, low investment units. There are a few catches. And so I do want to point them out as we go through this. And so let's start off with area one over here. So as you can see, we've got the dude with the blonde hair and the chick with the, well, I guess there's gonna be a lot of purple chicks, aren't there? But yeah, we've got these two characters. And so as you can see, they managed to clear it in 247 seconds. For me personally, I was actually able to clear it at 130 seconds, but okay, essentially there is not much to it. All you have to do is make sure that the purple chick, the compeller is up the front and then you've got the defender guy in the middle. And then not only that, you need to have free auto on and then set the skills to something like this. So all this is saying is that you need the chaos skill of the defender guy and you need the first skill for the purple compeller chick. All right, and so that's quite straightforward. As you can see, they are still at ascension zero. However, there is actually one more pretty big requirement. And well, this shouldn't be a big requirement if you guys are up to the broken lands. And so this requirement extends for both area one and area two and that is about like level 30 gear and so guys when i say level 30 gear i meant level 30 purple gear at least that was what was recommended to me but as you can see over here i've got a 20 30 20 but the 20s are actually both ascended and so to just like really play it safe i would recommend going to 30 purple like it's no real biggie going up to 30 especially if you just farm those equipment stages a couple of times however again at this stage in the game if you guys have unlocked the broken land you should be at about this like these equipments anyway and so obviously you will need three sets of these purple gears like one for each character because in area two we will be using three characters instead of two okay and so that's that requirement over there okay and so let's just like finish covering off area one if you guys are noticing that your characters are dying so for me the uh, this guy the red guy it was actually dying you just need to make sure that the equipment is there and if not then just ascend them to ascend one like that is more than enough but to be honest for me personally like level 30 on ascension zero was enough so you guys should not have that problem also their skill levels are level one you just needed to unlock the chaos skill for this guy okay so now we've wrapped up all of that let's move on to area two and so for area two you can see that we are going to be using luan we're going to be using pakane and yothaya and honestly guys the logic is pretty much the same here you just need yothaya and pakane at level 30 ascension zero and then on top of that you do need your luan at about ascension 140 for me, I had her higher because she's actually my main tank. I don't have pillow. But yeah, the way that this one works is actually very, very similar to how I've been progressing the game. It's telling you to use your skill one on Luan and skill two or your chaos skill on the Pakane. And then on top of that, you've got an AOE healer over here in your Thaya. And so it's very, very unlikely that you won't have both of these characters because again, they are unlockable via Chrono Space Breach. So just climb a little bit in PVP and you should be able to unlock them in like two days. Anyway, the idea of this comp is essentially 
you're using your skill one or like your order skill on the Luan to take all of the damage from the team. And so hopefully that explains why she has a higher level requirement, higher stat requirement, because she is going to be taking those hits. And then on the other hand, you've got Pakane in which you're going to be using her chaos skill. And so if you guys don't know what her chaos skill does, it essentially freezes the targets for one second. And so you can already see this is essentially a store comp. It is very much what I've been doing throughout the entire game. It is certainly not an ideal way to play because it's excruciating, but the fact that Moe was able to actually publish this one with low rarity units, the value of this is immense, considering you can only use each character in this game mode once. And so yeah, how this plays out is exactly how you would think, right? You've got your tank soaking up all of the damage, you've got Pakane dealing the AoE freeze as well as some defense down and damage. And then you've got your Thaya on the end who should theoretically be only healing Luan because she is taking all of the damage. And so all in all, you can see why this takes about like 200 and something seconds because you're just going to be healing and chipping and healing and chipping away at the mobs. And the freeze should provide enough CC for your team to stay alive, especially at such low ranks. All right. And so hopefully that covers off area two. If you guys don't understand something, do let me know down in the comments below. But yeah, area two, area one, I didn't talk through the strategy and as to why, but if you read the skills, it is very, very obvious. It's essentially the same thing. You're stalling them out, you're stunning them, you're CCing them until you can just chip them down and finish the stage. Okay, and so with this in the bag, let's move on to area three in which you cannot cheese, unfortunately. However, the team comp shown here is probably one of the best team comps that you can run into the, the enemy team because it is essentially your cookie cutter Mercury magic team. It is just so freaking strong. You got your pillow, you got your Ashpia who no longer have to be in area one or two. And then you've got the free to play healer who is more than enough because you've got a pillow. Pillow. Unfortunately, I don't have Pillow, I don't have Ashpia, and so I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do. But what it is probably going to come down to is a tank, a healer, and a DPS. For me, it's probably going to be like Tunnel, Witch, and I'll probably try Stall them out, and I'll I'll try upgrade another tank. Something like that, right? But yeah, the majority of you should have rerolled for the Pillow and the Ashpia, and that healer is certainly replaceable. Healer or Compeller at about A340, and you should be able to clear it on manual. Because if you guys have not noticed yet, your Pillow really shines when she is played on manual mode. She has an on-demand invulnerability for like three seconds, I think. And that is, oh man, that's so freaking cracked that I wish that I did not settle for a freaking Tornell on my CBT account. Ashpia, Ashpia is just so, so freaking good because of this guy over here. Do not forget to get her paralyzed passive and do not forget to use Venom Eruption, which is her chaos skill. Venom Eruption stuns the enemy for 0.5 seconds. I don't know how much more cracked it can get than that. And so you can most certainly try to substitute your Ashpia for your Maya, but like your Pillow, Pillow is just going to be doing so, so much work. And to be honest, if you do have Pillow, I have heard that people are able to actually cheese through this one as long as they're about like A340 just using Pillow by simply playing manually and being able to invulnerability all of the key skills. But my guys, what do I know? Because I don't even have a Pillow. I sleep on the bed flat. And so with all of that being said, hopefully you guys will have a pretty good idea about the broken lands. But not only that, I really want you guys to understand the rationale as to like how these team comps were put together. You can start to see like different strategies coming out and also like the different strengths or like what exactly makes each unit or character like really overpowered. When it comes to PVE content, like the broken lands or like clearing story, stall is almost always gonna work. I mentioned this in my tips video, I think part two, it's not what you wanna be doing Doing, but if it's gonna help you do this and oh my god we take these like that's it and so my guys i am so excited that we finally are getting some cheeses to clear content because i just love seeing low rarity clears especially because it is taking advantage of game mechanics and like some people they're just really freaking smart and figure these things out and so with that being said i want to know what you guys think about this cheese do you guys think it's smart or do you guys think it's dumb i think it's so so freaking smart and honestly shout out to moe for bringing this to us i don't know if you made it or not but like you're the first one that i saw that has published this and so you guys can head on over to the official discord and like give them a shout out but otherwise if you guys have found any other ways to cheese any other content please let us know because i love to see it and so if you guys do end up leaving a comment i would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video and so thank you guys so much but otherwise if this video has helped you please consider a like and if you have not subscribed yet then please consider that too but otherwise as your girl pakane once said all good things must come to an end and so wait she wasn't the one freezing the nation right anyway thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye